Greetings, this video is about the configuring of the MZ integration in the Mine Expert software from, <coughs> sorry, from the MS Expert Suite development project. MZ integration means that the data that have been loaded from file are integrated into a mass spectrum. Let's open a drift time mass spectrum, also known as ion mobility mass spectrometry uh, data file. This window that automatically displays until you check this checkbox that reads got it do not show again explains that when a file is loaded the data inside the file are scrutinized and some statistical uh, data are computed in particular there is a median value for the smallest mz delta that is found in all the spectra what is a spectrum a spectrum is a list of MZ intensity value pairs. And the way spectra are represented depend on the instrument, on the software version, on the analyzer, on the vendor, and so on. This data file is from the Waters Synapt uh, J2 uh, ion mobility mass spectrometer from Waters. And its data are particularly clean. When a file is loaded, some computations happen and the statistics do show up in the console window that you can always ask to show if it's not readily available using this menu show console window we see that in the mass spectrum file that was loaded there are 4970 spectra that the average of the spectrum size is 1597 uh, data points mz value intensity value pairs and one interesting datum is this medium of, of smallest delta of mz is 0 0.018 that means that the size of the MZ step in all this spectra is roughly of 0 0.019 MZ units. And that value gets automatically inserted in this dialog box, which now I increase in size so that you can read MZ integration parameters in here. When performing integrations from tick chromatogram or from color map to a mass spectrum, these parameters are automatically taken into consideration. So if we ask to show the mass spectrum window now, show mass spectrum window, we see it is there. Let's put it there. And we have the integration parameters window here. Let's integrate this tick, integra uh, tick um, chromatogram into a mass spectrum. This is the obtained mass spectrum. We can see it is pretty neat with an with a binning of 0 
0.019mz. That means that before starting the integration from here to here, the program creates an empty spectrum. When I say empty, that means that there is null intensity, but it creates the mz axis with cells that have that size. And then it goes through all the spectra of the data file and starts combining these spectra into the various cells initially computed. We can ask that no binning, that no binning be performed. Let's do that same integration again. And we will see that the result is roughly the same. As you can see. If we look at some parts, different parts of the spectrum, we can see that the spectra are almost superimposable. Let's try now to, to provide you with a feel of what happens. Let's try now to increase this MZ binning size to 0.1, for example. That means the bins will be very much larger than initially. And do that integration again. We now see that the new integration provides a different signal, much less detailed signal, because between a point and the su subsequent point, there is 0, 0,1 mz value. And that's too much to provide any detail of what we need. So this integration here is not good. And both integrations here are equivalent. Let's open another file that is from a micro QTOF uh, spectrometer from um, Brooker. And it's about a protein. Let's let the program integrate the data. And we now have the tick chromatogram. Let's integrate this small region here. We can zoom on it. Let's always integrate exactly that region here. So start with an arbitrary binning that was um, configured to be of 0, 0, 0,017 mz values. and see what happens. We discovered that the trace here is pretty nice unless there are these small spikes, inverted spikes. If we now ask data-based binning, this kind of integration initially computes a set of bins that is based on the bins found in the first spectrum of the spectrum list. And by experience, I know that this is the proper integration manner from, for these data from the Bruker Microtof. As you can see, let's remove this older integration. And you see here there are three buttons. This button locks the MZ range. So we can see now that all the traces move all along. And what we see is that by integrating in the database binning manner, the spikes have gone. I urge you to look at the uh, user manual that explains that in more detail. It's important for you to, to um, somehow grasp that 
mass spectrum combination is almost a science in itself. I will show you with a very eloquent example. Let's look at data obtained from the LUMOS Orbitrap instrument. This. We can remove these traces in the meantime. Let's remove these also and wait for the spectra to be freed. Let's look at this file here. So this is peptide stuff obtained on a Lumos Orbitrap instrument from uh, Thermo. Let's integrate this with the default integration parameter here, arbitrary binning, with, as you can see, very small bins. That is, each point on the mass spectrum is followed by another one at a distance of only 0 0.006 mz. Let's integrate this. There we are. What we see is that this is a mono this is a, an isotopic cluster for a peptide and a single cluster peak is made of many small points. The number of bins in this spectrum is too large. We should have three points in here. Let's now change this and go to 0012 by reducing the number of peaks by 2 here by increasing the bin size by a factor 2. Let's do another integration. And if we look, we see a very nice spectrum here. But we still have on the other peaks, we still have some uh, hairy sub-peaks. We can use PPM as a resolution that is more relative and applies to the whole MZ range in, in, uh, in a proper manner. And let's go to, the to something like 20 PPMs of uh, bin size. Let's do the same integration as before and we'll see it's much better now. We can start reading the spectrum in a reasonable manner. 25 ppm may be exactly what we need. Yes, there we are. So when you look at the data here what you discover is that we are actually changing the number of bins per MZ unit in this, in this edit box. And that's for the better. It would take a long time and maybe I should look at the, the numerical values of a single spectrum to show you why this happens. Of course, in the proprietary vendor software, we don't need to configure this because the vendor knows how to write software to do the proper integrations. But for us to be able to integrate properly any data coming from any vendor, we decided that we would do this kind of uh, configuration uh, uh, feature. There is another feature that is useful, is the filtering and smoothing with the savitsky gole filtering algorithm. Let's go back, remove these, and let, let's go back to this mobility mass spectrometry experiment. Let's integrate this region. And we can see here that the data are bumpy. 
let's go back to the no binning no binning uh, remove this trace let's go back to the no binning integration and you'll see that the trace is correct although it is a bit bumpy here when we apply here the savitsky golay filtering by checking this checkbox and using these default values we'll see that that integration provides a very nice trace let's look look at it and you see that it matches perfectly perfectly the trace so provides a very nice representation of the mass spectrometric data exactly as you would expect <coughs> for a filtered mass spectrum trace there we are if we hide the bumpy with the H key we see the trace and it's perfect so as you can see this dialog box here allows you to pretty well configure the um, mass spectrometry uh, data integration from tick chromatogram or color map to a mass spectrum.